You know, it's incredibly important to socialize your puppy from the moment you're bringing them into your household to help with behavior, with training, and to make them comfortable and confident in their own skin in the environments that they're going to be in. But you also know that puppies are not allowed to be in public spaces, on the ground in public spaces, around other dogs outside of your household and around other people until a certain stage. Your dog has to have all of their shots to make sure they are fully vaccinated against the things that they can so easily pick up from public spaces. So if you've not checked with your vet on this yet, make sure that you are checking with your vet. Some of these can take weeks to get through the whole process because they have to give one and then wait for reactions and then let it kind of sit for a little bit before they can give another shot. So check with your vet for the all clear to go out in public and actually be in public. But before then, these are some things that you can do. Now, one of my favorites is a puppy stroller. This is not going to be accessible to everyone. I understand that, but we have lots of great content on how you can be leveraging puppy strollers. I highly recommend dog strollers for puppies who are unable to be out in the public or for puppies who are still little and can't do full walks yet. But this also works really, really well for senior dogs who are no longer able to do those full walks with you. So there's a whole range you can use from puppyhood to seniorhood. And we give you lots of ideas on how to use it on that stage in between those, those years from year one all the way to year 12, 13 until you start to need those things. And puppy strollers are incredibly helpful because they're in a safe contained space. A stroller is going to have all of the walls and have a roof. It's going to have mesh so that the puppies can see through it. This way, your puppies are not touching the ground. They can't sniff. They can't be around anything that could potentially transfer some germs to them. So you can even go out for walks in the park. Just have your puppy in the stroller. You can go out to a farmer's market. You can go traveling. You can go do things. The things that you're typically doing, you can take them where they can see through the mesh netting they can experience the scents and the sights and the sounds of those different things without being able to actually touch any of those things. And having that distance is really going to help. But I, another reason that I love the stroller is that people can't touch them. So, so, so many people just think they have all the right in the world to just come up and touch your dog. I, I cannot go anywhere without people trying to touch my dogs and I have to advocate for them. But if you have a puppy inside a stroller, they can't get to your dog. They can put their hands up against the mesh, which some of them will do, unfortunately, but they cannot outright touch your dog, which will give your puppy a bit of safety, a bit of space, a bit of a bubble to kind of back up and away from a person if they need to. So strollers are really great because they can see and experience the environments without being directly in the environment. So I started out with mine, just taking my dog on short little walks so they could see the neighborhood, they could see the park, they can see places that they're going to need to be familiar with as older dogs, but they couldn't directly touch him. So for a good a good chunk of time there, I had my puppies in the stroller all the time when we were out in public and help them to not be afraid because they were able to see those things, experience those things, smell the things, but not actually touch the ground until they were fully ready to be out in public. And even then I was still taking the stroller with me so they could have short experiences out of the stroller and more of that seeing and learning and internalizing from inside of the stroller as well. Strollers are really, really great for that socialization aspect because they can experience it without being on the ground or being able to be touched. Now, if you don't have a stroller, or even if you do, this next one's gonna be incredibly helpful for you. I want you to get your dog, get in the car and go for a drive to somewhere where there are a lot of people going to be around that your dog can watch through the window of your car. Now we have lots of videos on car safety for pets. We have videos on getting your dog comfortable with car rides, and long car rides, how to behave in the car, how to overcome fear of cars, lots of things here on the channel. And you want to make sure that as you're doing this, you are going somewhere that they can easily see people they can look at people, they can experience people, they can hear people, and you're going to turn off your car and sit in the back seat with your dog and just watch through the windows. Now, during this time, you're gonna be talking to your dog. You're gonna be pointing things out. You're gonna be holding them, keeping them calm, showing them where to look, and showing them how to behave, showing them how they're going to be quiet and just watch. I love the phrase, just watch. I use that with my dogs to teach them how not to bark at things, but be able to look out the window and see that a delivery person is coming up to my house or that they can look out of the car window and not bark at the people walking by. But that's another conversation for us. If you'd like a video on that, go ahead and let me know. Your goal here is to show them, to give that example of how to behave 
in the car just watching people. And I really like the idea of going somewhere with a lot of people. Hustle and bustle is what we're looking for. So go to a store, go to a mall, go to a place where people are going to be parking in the parking lots and walking back and forth. You're going to have a good clear line of sight to the store. So you want them to be able to see people coming in and out of that store, carrying bags, going in with children, walking behind the very back of your car and making sure that your dog is able to experience these things. Now, at first, they'll probably be a little afraid. They'll probably bark a little like with all of these things. When they're experiencing new things, new people, new places, new stuff, they're going to be a little nervous and it's your dog job to comfort them or to bring down some of those emotions and make them feel secure and ready to move forward. And so you are literally talking them through this. You're showing them what's going on and you're just going to hold them up by the window so that they can put their paws on the side of the car and you're then able to guide them through the process. And you're going to do this again and again and again. With all of these, practice and repetition is incredibly important. So taking them somewhere where they can see things, very, very valuable. And when they get comfortable with that, the next step is to try cracking the window a little bit. You don't want it very far down, just a little bit so that they can get more of the sound and more of the smells coming in the window so they can get more comfortable with that. You can bring it down further as we go. As always, your dog should wear in a harness and seat belted in. Even if you were parked watching things, just in case anything happens, you want to make sure they're restrained in the car, but can still see as you were teaching them through that valuable opportunity of looking through the windows. And again, you're going to multiple locations and looking in multiple ways. So sometimes have them look at the side window, sometimes have them look at the back window, sometimes allow them to look through the front window. But your job is to sit there, hold them, comfort them, and point out what they should be seeing and how to react to those things. And of course, the next step from that is to then move to the trunk of your vehicle. Once your dog is incredibly comfortable being inside the enclosed car watching things, now the next step is for you to leash your dog Take them around to the back of your vehicle, whether you have a trunk that is detached from the interior of your car or is connected, you're just going to open up that trunk and you and your dog are going to sit in the back. They're leashed to you, so they're not going to go anywhere. If you have a hands-free leash that you can kind of clip around your waist and then hold on to them from there, that's even better. It's even safer for you to keep them in the vehicle so they can't pull or tug it out of your hand. But again, make sure if you're using a hands-free leash that you are physically capable of enduring them on a hands-free leash. We have videos on how to do that. And then you want to make sure that you're sitting there and again, showing them, here's what we're looking at, puppy. This is how we're reacting to it. Are you seeing that person over there? Are you seeing those things? And this can be also good for traveling. It doesn't have to just be for people interaction. So if you're going to be inside of the car, you're going to want to have things that are moving and hustling and bustling around a little bit more for being in the trunk. You can have the hustle and bustle, but this is really good for the environmental side of it. So if you are somebody who's going to be going hiking a lot, take them to a place where they can see the great outdoors and they can start to hear the crickets chirping and the, the squirrels running around. They can see where they're going to be in the future, hiking and climbing and playing. If you go to a lake a lot, Take them there, put them in the trunk of your car, sit down with them, and then explore just from the trunk of the car. Allow them that distance, but they have the ability to then really hone in on that environment. So I very much like sitting in the trunk of your car to observe things for that environmental side of things, but you can also do it for the human socialization side as well. Of course, another way that you can socialize your puppy without putting them on the ground or allowing people around them is to use a backpack or a sling. Now, this is going to be something that is specific to your breed of dog. If you have a bigger puppy, you're not going to be able to use something like a side sling. That's really going to throw off your balance. You may need a backpack for that. If you are somebody who thinks your dog's going to jump out of a backpack and you need more control, strap them into that sling on the side of you where you can clamp onto them with your arm. You have to do the research on this one, but this is something that you absolutely can be doing to have them close to your body and up in the air. Now, I do recommend that you strap them in, have a harness, have a little leash, and make sure that it's attached to you, attached to your bag. So even if they decide to pop right on out, you're not going to lose them if they run away because they're still going to be attached to you in some way. So you want to make sure you've got something that you can carry them in depending on your breed, depending on who you 
are and how you can work with things physically and then you can keep them socialized from there because they're right next to you right against your body but it's not somewhere that's going to be on the ground now we don't always have to go out to socialize your puppy you can actually bring the socialization to your puppy right at your own home and this is going to allow the puppy to be on the ground in your yard and you can have people come to you ask your friends ask your family ask your delivery people to engage and to socialize with your puppy and this can be as simple as you were in your yard and somebody is down by the road getting out of their car or putting mail in your mailbox or whatever it is and you're watching your puppy you're teaching your puppy who these people are how they function and how to engage and interact with those people you can get your friends and family to come in and they can come up to the fence and they can talk to your dog over the fence and eventually they can come inside of the fence area and they can play with your puppy in your yard you can do this in stages in different steps however you want with whoever you want but you have the ability to bring outsiders in and outsiders meaning anybody who does not live in your household and is not somebody they see almost every minute of every day right so you're going to get your cousins your best friend your sister and their kids all those people you want them to come over and you want to get as many people over as possible but before they arrive explain the process, explain what distance they're going to be at because not everybody should be touching or handling your dog. You're going to want to do it again in stages. So you're going to have people who are out on the road, people who are at the edge of your yard, people who are in your yard, but not near your dog, people who are right next to your dog, but not touching your dog and people who are actively touching your dog. And you can rotate through these. So maybe today this person is showing up, but they're not touching the dog. Tomorrow they get to touch the dog. You can have a plan of action that you were doing and rotate through people, depending on your puppy's mood, how accepting they are of different things, what's going on in your life, what's happening. So you can decide when, where, and how people are engaging. Just bring them to your property so that your dog is not experiencing a new environment, new people, all the new things. And you can do this in steps so that it builds up their confidence. As always, you are checking with your vet to know when you are available and allowed to go out in public and put your dog on the ground. You want to make sure you're taking some safety measures even beyond that point of them having all their shots to keep your dog safe and healthy. Puppies are going to be more susceptible to a lot of things and so you have to be careful that they're not eating things in the park that they shouldn't be or socializing with big dogs that might be a little too scary for them at their age or being touched by too many people. You really have to advocate for your puppies while you're out and about and doing things and teaching your puppy and training your puppy. So we've got lots of videos on all of these things. If you've got questions, go ahead and drop those down below. But you want to make sure that you're aware of the timeline for your puppy and you are protecting them while also socializing them, educating them, and training them on how to be involved with other people even before they are cleared by your vet to technically be out in public. Drop your questions down below. And if you have any health-related questions, those always go to your vet. So go check in with your vet, make sure everything is good. And we'll see you in the upcoming videos as we help you to continue to learn to grow as a dog parent to give your dog the best life possible.